Hi, I'm not quite ready for the big reveal just yet, but I thought I'd tell you what I've been working on in the meantime. I've been building some infrastructure stuff so that I can basically have something real to show you instead of kind of just placeholders all the time. I've been working on track recording and playback, and I thought I'd tell you about recording today because it, it's, it's presented some interesting challenges, basically. So I've mentioned in the past that the non-destructive workflow is sort of central to my idea for Loopy Masterpiece. And just to give you some contrast, Loopy right now isn't non-destructive. And when it records an overdub, for example, it just blends the audio with the track and saves it as a mixed down stereo recording. So I, I want to be able to take those separate layers and you know, adjust the fading or offset one with respect to the others, that sort of thing. So that's basically introduced a few complexities. The first complexity is one that I've had to address with Loopy as well, which is when recording starts. So Loopy is very um, gesture heavy. So you, know, you can tap a track, which either begins recording or toggles mute, but you can also long press to bring up the track menu, or you can do a circle gesture to adjust the volume and a few other gestures. And to tell them apart, basically you need to wait. So uh, you get a beginning of the touch, and then you wait, say, half a second, and if the touch is still ongoing, you know that it's a long press, and then you can show the track menu, etc. The problem with using all of those gestures along with recording is that if you wait to be able to know that it is, in fact, just a tap and not a long touch, you've already missed the beginning of the track. So to solve that in Loopy, I basically record all the time. So there's basically a one second buffer that just continuously records the latest second of audio so that when recording starts, it can pull the audio from that buffer and then keep on recording live audio after that so that it always makes sure that it's sort of beginning in time. The advantage there is that it allows a certain kind of latitude with the beginning of recording. So uh, I can basically start a recording any time up to the end of that buffer and it'll still record perfectly in time, which is really quite powerful. The second complication is one that's unique to Masterpiece, which is recording each layer of overdub as a separate layer. So those layers need to be both seamless as a loop so that there's a nice crossfade across the loop boundary at the top. Uh, you don't get any glitches or anything. But it also needs to be seamless with respect to the next layer you've recorded. So, you know, say you've got a, a two bar loop and you've recorded four bars in an overdub. So you've got two separate layers which sit end to end. Now, there needs to be a nice, smooth, um, continual uh, progression across the boundary of those two layers so that you can um, it sort of represents the fact that it's one long piece of audio that's separated into two separate bits. So the, the tricky part there is you need to basically add crossfades. So you need to start recording a little bit before the beginning of each loop and a little bit after. And then you take those extra bits of audio and you blend them together so that you have a nice smooth kind of wash across the, the boundary without compromising the levels at the beginning and the end of the audio. So you, know, you have an impulse at the beginning you need to make sure that impulse remains. So you start recording before and then sort of blend up to it. The tricky thing with blending is you also need to make sure that you blend evenly across the boundary so that you don't get any sort of high points in the audio, which you could hear as a kind of pulse in the playback. So that means having the exact right length of the fade so that one fades in while the other fades out. And at any point, they sum to one, basically. You know, so at this point, you've got, say, 70% of the beginning and 30% of the end. You have to add up to 100%. And then the third complexity is figuring out what to do with partial loops. So there's a thing in musical terms that's called an anacrusis or an upbeat, which is where you've got a little bit of the musical phrase that occurs before the downbeat. So you have, you know, and one, and two, and three, and four. If you just record the loop itself without the upbeat, you miss the beginning and it, it's incomplete basically. So I mean, in Loopy that's easy because it's always just mixing together. But in Loopy Masterpiece, it doesn't really make sense to have that upbeat or the anacrusis as a separate layer because it's, you know, it's part of the same phrase you've just recorded. So I've added some logic that basically figures out if it's an anacrusis or a, a trailing beat or two at the end of the recording 
and it, it kind of mixes it in together. So that's a bunch of fairly complicated audio processing. And to make sure that it's working right, I'm using this thing called test-driven development. It's a, a way of building software that rather than writing code and just kind of hoping it works and testing it a bit here and there, you actually write code that tests the code you're writing at the same time. So you, you build a piece of code and you build the stuff that tests the code in tandem, which means that you know straight away if you've made a mistake. And later on down the line, if you're making changes, again, you know straight away if you've broken something. So it's really useful. And what I'm doing is generating audio. It's basically a, uh, an increasing sine wave. And then I push it through these classes and make sure that the files that are recorded from that audio sound right. And I can test with sample accurate precision. I can, I can make sure that everything's utterly perfect, which is really satisfying. So along with programmatically testing that the audio is right, I'm, I'm outputting audio files too, so that I can hear, make sure that they're seamless, they sound right. Here's an example of that. So this is uh, a test which puts it all together, which basically records one layer of the track, waits, plays back a layer, and then does three overdubs. And you can see the four layers here. So if I turn on loop playback and play it, you'll hear that's the first layer. And then as I turn on each overdub, you can hear the new layers come in. it's fairly seamless and also if you listen carefully you can actually hear the rising tone over the last three layers and hear that it's continuous which is very satisfying yep so that's kind of good news it's working and in the future if I break it I'll know straight away which is very nice for my peace of mind Anyway, I'm going to get back to work on the playback stuff, which I'll tell you about next week. So that's it for me. Bye.